Welcome to Managing Asia. I'm Christine Tan. In the world's biggest e-commerce battleground, JD.com is a giant here in China. This week in Beijing, we meet the influential billionaire behind the online retailer, Richard Liu. Inside this $60 billion e-commerce empire, JD's 43-year-old CEO is doubling down. Direct, bold and unapologetic. Richard Liu wants to be the undisputed top retailer in China, not just online but offline. Beyond core e-commerce business, we have a multi-channel or multi-business model on the retail industry. We will use the new technology to make sure we can satisfy our customers in different ways. JD's billionaire founder is a natural techie with humble roots growing up in Jiangsu province. The son of a cargo ship owner learned to write codes while studying in university. Liu has also been a startup guy since young, trying his hand in a restaurant business before selling laser discs and CD writers, and only stumbling upon the internet in 2004. From the day one, I made a rule I only work with the famous brands because the middle class of China will grow very fast. So I think I made a good choice. You want to be trustworthy and reliable? Yes. JD has jumped onto the big leagues. It's the world's third largest internet company by revenue. A Fortune Global 500 company with one of the most intelligent logistic networks in the world. It's now locked in a fierce dogfight with Jack Ma's Alibaba. Right from the start, you've had to battle Alibaba, which is a dominant player, and its Taobao platform. Unlike Alibaba, which offers a marketplace for merchants and sellers, you sell directly to consumers, you carry your own inventory, and you are responsible for delivery itself. Why take on a different business model? Because I need the quality control. I can 100% make sure every goods from my company to the customer is qualified. and. Uh, also, we need a lot of time to build the whole like a traffic system, post service system, dealing system, logistic system, and a lot. I need a, a lot of time to build up the systems. When the system is ready, we can open to the third party vendors. That's our POV business model. Controlling quality, controlling the entire supply chain. Yeah. How long did it take to win over the Chinese consumers' trust? Well, I think almost the span from 2004 until 2010, at least six years. So when we get the very good reputation from the brand owner side and the consumer side, so we began to open our platform to the third party vendors and make a very strict standard for the third party vendors. You were very determined from the start to make sure there was no counterfeiting going on on your website yeah. itself. Yeah. Before you listed a company in 2014, Tencent took a 15% stake in JD.com, which gave you access to 900 million users on its WeChat and yeah. mobile QQ platform. Yeah. How much has your relationship with Tencent helped you translate into top-line growth for the company all these years? I think uh, Tencent is a company like uh, uh, unlimited resources uh, warehouse and uh, like uh, WeChat today, everything we have seen is less than 10 percent. I mean, here still at least over 90 percent of the uh, gold waiting for us to, to dig out. So it can bring us a lot of new active customers. And uh, from the WeChat, we can target any consumer in China. How much has your relationship with Tencent? help translate into top-line growth for the company. Today, over 24% of the active new customers come from both Mobile QQ and WeChat. So it can help us to attract more new customers. Your recent partnership with Walmart has also boosted sales volume and attracted new customers. What other partnerships are you exploring to help drive growth for JD.com? Well, we have a lot of new projects uh, you know, we have a project means GD with Tencent. We also have a project GD with Jin Total, which also have a huge traffic. We have a project with GD uh, Baidu. And uh, very soon, I think, uh, by the end of this month, we have a new project called GD with Qihu. So 
both Chief Tencent, Baidu, and Jinn Total, they have a huge traffic, which can bring more new customers to us. I think. But profits have been elusive. Though JD was profitable for the first time in Q1 since 2014, it fell back into the red in Q2 with a net loss of $73 million. Your strategy of building an extensive logistics network has also helped you close the gap with Alibaba here in China, but it's been a costly exercise, one that's kept you away from the path of profitability. Are things going to change soon? Is that going to change soon? I think it's a misunderstanding. I mean, our own logistic system didn't bring more cost to us, but it saved a lot of money because our logistic system is quite efficient and a lower cost compared with the third-party logistic delivery companies. So we will keep investing on our logistic system and make sure in the future the efficiency will be faster and faster and the cost will be lower and lower. What sort of cost savings are you looking at? For your logistics, network. I think it's same as uh, like uh, efficiency. Uh, I can give you an example in Beijing. Our delivery man can deliver over 150 parcels per day, but five years ago they can only deliver 60. I'm sure in the next five years they can deliver over 250. And the second is we are building more warehouses. Today we have over 335 warehouses in China. Mm -hmm. In the next three years, we will build over 500. So our goods will be closer to closer to our customers to save more delivery cost. You're talking about economies of scale. That's when things yeah. will start to kick in. Yeah. In the past, our logistic business is like a cost center but uh, we want to be a profit center in the future. Last year in 2016, despite growing revenues to 37.5 billion US dollars, JD.com posted a loss of 0.4 billion. How do you expect to do this year, 2017? Well, anyone think it will be over expectation from anyone, including both inside and outside. Are you close to profitability this we, year? We, we, we have been already profitable from Q1, yeah. Are you and, uh, close to profitability for the full year? Yes. So this year, 2017, will be the year you turn profitable? Yes. How We profitable? have a guidance. You know, we have, for non-GAAP, we have the first guidance is between from zero to one percent. But uh, I think uh, for the, this evening earnings call, we will, I don't know how to say, increase the guidance. What's going to drive profitability this year? What's going to be some of the factors that help you get to profitability this year? You can, your logistics system will be more efficient, uh, save some money, and uh, once your growth very large base, you have more like uh, negotiation power, so you can go get better items, terms from the suppliers, uh, can improve your like uh, uh, growth margin so it can help us to be profitable. So just to be clear, this year we'll finally see you turn profitable. Yes. Earlier this year, you announced a spin-off of your finance unit, JD Finance. Is it ultimately to get into more financial services? Are you ultimately looking to list JD Finance? I think it's both, because uh, like uh, a China local company, it's easier for us to get the license from the government. And the second, uh, you know, it's a uh, financial consumer business model, if it can list in China, it will be very good to communicate with the consumers. What financial services could JD Finance get into? Uh, a lot. We have from the pay online payment system to the consumer credit and uh, also to the supply chain loan. Uh, in the future, I, th I think we can bring more service for our partners and our customers. When are you looking to list JD Finance? What sort of time frame are you looking at? No, today we have no end time. JD.com beat Alibaba to list on a NASDAQ. Are you looking to do the same with JD Finance versus Ant Financial? Listing is not like a computer something, you know. No? <laughs> Listing is just a, a way, as a huge company, it needs to be a public to make your, you know, uh, finance more transparency. So it's very good for our partners. 
uh, for finance, I think uh, listening to be listening is never nothing to the competition. You recently also invested close to $400 million in a UK-based e-commerce website, Farfetch. How significant is this deal in your push to get into the luxury market? In the future, we have a uh, judgment in China luxury market. First, uh, more and more Chinese consumers want to buy some unique, some special unique uh, SKUs from the luxury brands. So Farfetch is very good at the uh, cooperate with the boutiques, you know. So a lot of SQ on Farfetch in China you, you cannot find, both online and offline. So it can bring more value to the Chinese consumers. Apart from Farfetch, are you looking to make more acquisitions in this space? No, we will build our own luxury platform we call the Top Life. It will be on the market very soon. So, but it's different from Farfetch. The top life, we will only work with the luxury company which have been in China. So Farfetch like a power line business model. Top life is a, a local business model. How big is the challenge to convince luxury brands to sell their products on your e-commerce website, given all these concerns about counterfeits in China? Yeah, it's really a challenge because uh, in the past uh, 100 years, the luxury brands only do business in the offline. But the good news is today, every luxury brand, they uh, realized they need to go to the digital world. So I think um, we need some time, but sooner or later, I'm sure we will cooperate with any luxury brands. They also know that China is a huge market they cannot ignore. Yes. It's part of in China, I mean, the online business is, will be a majority channel. It's not like in Europe, not like in the U.S. The penetration of e-commerce in China will be higher than any country in the world. These days, after operating for more than 10 years, the rivalry between you and Alibaba is intensifying. You're gaining market share and you're closing the gap on Alibaba. What's your outlook for JD.com in the next five years? Are you going all out to overtake Alibaba? Within five years, I'm sure we will surpass them to be the largest B2C platform in China. Yeah. Because we, we always grew faster than them. Yeah. And uh, also because our user experience is always better than any competitor in China. So you're pretty confident you can overtake Alibaba sure. here in China, 100%. 100% sure, yeah. So Jack Ma should be afraid of you? I don't know. <laughs> you, can, you should ask him, right? <laughs> you said five years to overtake Alibaba here in China. Could it happen sooner? Yes, it's a, a strong possibility. Stay with us more with Richard Liu, founder and CEO of JD.com, in just a moment. When we decide to go to other side of China, we never, you know, set up a, a, a bottle line. We will continue to invest. No any limit. Managing Asia, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tanya Breyer, and that was just a taster of what you can find on CNBC Life. For more award-winning content, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.